All right, man. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, man. I'm saying here with Marquise Filthy from yes, Roxbury, right? Am I correct? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah, part man. of Roxbury? Because I'm from Roxbury and kind of um, brain a little bit, so I don't know. I spent a lot of time um, growing up on Dudley Street. Okay, um, Dudley Street. Like, what right part? Next like, to, right next to the Vine Street Community Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you ever visit there, attending? Like, nah, like, is it, nah, okay, nah, nah. Like, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Unfortunately, nah, nah. I wasn't. He's like, nah, I ain't do like that. that. <laughs> nah. nah, I used to live in um in Roxbury near okay. near Dudley. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Around on off yeah. of Warren Street and mm-hmm. stuff like that around that okay. area. So I know the area, mm-hmm. man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how was Roxbury now, like, you know, um, towards rap and hip hop? Because um as far as I know, like I'm trying to uh we have a little stigma on us, I believe. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna I, I don't really wanna say the name of the person. But uh, that got got us in a weird stigma. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, I'm trying to, I know I'm trying to like build with Boston artists or mm-hmm. Massachusetts artists yeah. that um, you know can um, kind of defunk our, our little myths in Boston. Yeah. So how's the hip hop scene in Boston? Uh, I think it's great. It's a lot going on. It's a lot. You and this, it's all it's all different. Like. You got your lyrical miracle guys. Yeah. You got your guys that's gonna give you your melodic stuff. You got your guys yeah. gonna give you some alternative stuff. Like True. it's, True. it's, it's. I think it's pretty dope. Like it's you don't like and being in Boston. I don't think if you're looking for like within the the music scene, you don't need to go anywhere else. Like you have we have all of it here. Yeah. All, all kinds of music, R and B. Everyone's doing everything here. Do you plan to work? Or have you worked with any other Boston artists that we may know of, or maybe some up and coming ones you want to yeah, shout out? Yeah, I worked, I worked with uh, a lot of artists. You in the in the past? Right now, I'm like really honing in on like my my own shit. What I yeah. got, what I got going on. Yeah. But um, I worked with a ton of guys. Uh, he two forty. He's out. He's out in the, in L. A. Right now. Okay. But um, I went to high high school with him. Um, but he's like born in Boston. I live yeah, in L. A. Yeah, type yeah, of type. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, C4, I've done shows with him. He, okay, he goes crazy. C4, yeah. I I fuck with C4 hard. All right, all right. Um, there's Clark B. He's cool. There's um my boy Sha from Brockton. Okay, he, he's a part of a larger collective called Product and Play. Um, some a lot of a lot of Brockton guys. I think they're all Brockton. I, I know G Fam Black from Brockton. Okay, I never heard of him. G fan black, I, okay. I kind of messed with him because um, I just moved out to Brooklyn three years ago, mm-hmm. and I was doing the same thing, looking for like who's out here yeah. in hip hop that's hot. Yeah, and you just tell me, you know, who, who's the other guy from Brooklyn? His name's Shaw. Shaw. Yeah. Shah. Okay. S H A. All right. Shaw. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. He's cool. But there's there's a lot. If, even if you just go down like my catalog and see the songs I'm like featured on and shit like that on like um, Apple Music or Spotify. Yeah. You'll see like all the other artists I I've, I've worked on. All the artists I've worked with um are from Boston. So yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what's up. And do you got plans in the near future to uh create with any artists from Boston Mass? Anyway. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna do I'm Oh gonna the do Massachusetts Pair. Let me just put it out. Yeah, I'm gonna do a whole tape with Black Will soon. Oh word? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now before we break down this album, uh Talk about your name a little bit, Marquise Filthy. That has something to do with wrestling, right? Am I am I off um, the beaten path a little bit? I, no, I didn't get it from wrestling. Um, that would be a dope wrestling name, though. But um, I remember I was probably like tenth grade. I was watching the Kendrick Lamar interview, and he okay. said he went from K Dot to Kendrick Lamar because he wanted to like give his authentic self as an artist. And mm. I, I agreed, and that resonated with me. Yeah. So um, I used my first name, Marquise, and then um, I randomly selected the word filthy. I, I, I can't tell you why. I don't really know why. <laughs> like Fil- some type of, like filthy, it came but, to you, like in yeah. a dream or something. But like. then my, my whole idea of it was to flip it. So mm-hmm. like filthy, you might think like, oh, nasty, nasty, yeah, dirty, but the, the connotation. Two-line crew rapper or something. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. yeah. The acronym is Fresh Inspiring Love Truth Honest Youth. Oh, nah, that's dope. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, like one of those things of like, like duality. Don't judge a book by its cover. That kind of basic shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to excuse to ask you this one question, man. Because <laughs> I know you like wrestling. You're a wrestling fan, right? Yeah, hell yeah. All right, check Big this wrestling out. Fan. My first question is, man, when did you find out wrestling was fake? Um, I don't know. 
that's a good question. I, I don't remember the moment, but I, I kind of feel like I probably just didn't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's for no reason I ask that because, like, when I ask, like, wrestling, some wrestling fans, they get mad at me for just saying it's fake. <laughs> And, I, and I, listen, I know it's not fake, fake meaning because they got they, they get real bruises, they get real injuries. Yeah, but you know, what I'm saying it's 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 a stage, it's a play in a yeah. sense, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So sure. you agree, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, know now, that. I love wrestling. Like, who's your favorite wrestler? Damn. All right. So well, you got to name like five. I'm gonna something. give you two. I'm okay, gonna I, give I, you two. I, I, I'm gonna give you like some real I real you slide, some real wrestlers. Okay. Like okay. I'm gonna give you like some real wrestling shit. Like you might you might not know. You gonna go deep like Devon Eriks or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go deep. 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 Don't Okay, just say Hulk Hogan and a couple other people. I know all that in mm-hmm. the past. So you can go, go ahead. See what okay. you got. What you got? So my real favorite wrestler of all time is X-Pac. Like that's... X who? X-Pac. I don't even know this dude. Hold on now. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, wait. Get, wait what, what, WCW? He was in WCW for some time. He he did do uh, a little see, WCW. Yeah, so going, uh, I don't know. If if you do remember Hulk Hogan, yeah. you, do you remember 123 Kid from back in those yeah. days? Yeah, yeah. It's... Him, but like a different version of him. Okay. So that's my real favorite. Right, okay. But like, honestly, like basic, I'll probably say like, damn. You said two. So you doing another one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ba- like basic. Um. Yeah. I'm a. I'm gonna go with. I'll go with the Rock. I'll go with. The you rock. go the Rock. Yeah. I'll go with the Rock. I hope not the Rock's acting, but the Rock's wrestling. <laughs> the Rock's wrestling, man. Yeah, as a wrestler. You know what I'm saying? As a wrestler, he's good. <laughs> Uh yeah, but you know, my favorite wrestler is uh Macho Man Randy Savage. Okay, can yeah, never do the voice, but yeah. I love him. You know the the theatrical performances mm-hmm. with the capes and the yeah, uniforms, yeah. and you know this dude came out. Macho he knew how to do guy. it. Yeah, like he, he just fly. knew how to do it. So I was like, fly. this dude's fly, man. <laughs> All right, let's get into the album, man. But we're gonna break it down song by song. We're gonna have some questions in between. You know, you know, play some games. You know, go do a little bit of verses back and forth. Okay. Um, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like, I, let me give you an example. I'll give. Let's do the first verses before getting to the album. The first verses would be, uh, Sativa verse Indica. Um, Sativa verse Indica. What, what would you? What's the? Do you smoke? First of all, I don't. Yeah, know. I see, yeah, I smoke a lot. I, I, I work. Okay. Out, I, work, <laughs> I work out of dispensary. So. Oh damn! <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Let me get. <laughs> let me got any applications? You know what I'm saying? But um, so I got a story about indica. So when I first started smoking yeah. and like learning about weed and shit, I was like big on indica. Like, I feel like I'm naturally like an impulsive, fast, crazy person. So I like for my weed something to kind of slow me down. Slow you down, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I could think about shit before I, you know, make a bad decision or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, I was sense. big on indica. Then I moved to Cali for a year and a half. Okay. In Cali, I was in the desert. I, it was hot. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, so yeah. smoking uh smoking indica all day, I was sleeping all day. So once, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. once I realized that, I switched to sativa, and now I'm a sativa person. Even after moving back to Mass, I'm sativa. It's funny because uh, I'm a sativa person too, but yeah. I gotta fight the indica people all, all the time. <laughs> yeah. so why do I put people yeah. in the hell up? People love indica. They love. I mean, they love to relax and and kind of maybe not think of something. Maybe indica is stronger. Stronger, mm-hmm. I think, in the THC balances. Yeah. I believe. Also working in. Um, yes, you're right about that. I indica think so. Usually the THC is, is usually high. Yeah, high. I think. But working in the in the industry, I learned recently a lot of people use weed to sleep. So like yeah, those, yeah, yeah. that sleeping, the sleeping shit. And like you said yeah. earlier, to kind of calm their mind down. Mm-hmm. I use it as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, Me, I've always been someone. I've always been someone like when I'm high, I want to enjoy. It. I don't like to yeah. get high and then go to sleep. And Me then, neither. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's one of the main reasons I did. I do sativa. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it keeps me. Yeah. I'm up. I'm doing music reviews. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to music. I'm hyped. You, you know, function, yeah. I could probably watch a, a a show or two or something. Mm-hmm. You know, and be excited. All right, let's get into the album, man. Marquise Filthy. It's called 819. Yes, sir. Um, it's about, I'm going to say, a good 20 minutes, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, let's talk about the title, man, and the album cover. You got uh, it's 819. I'm thinking, I don't know, area code, zip code. So it got to be a number that's yeah. relevant for, t- for your life and to you. And is it relevant to the album cover, the 819? That's a good question. Um, So, the first question, 819. Um, <clears throat> So... 819 is actually my birthday, August 19th. Oh, okay, cool. But the significance of it is the fact that I, for like, I'll probably say the past two years, I've been seeing it crazy, like, everywhere, on license plate, on on just anywhere, like, 
anywhere, any given time. Like we, I see numbers. I'll run into this that that sequence yeah. eight eight one nine. Yeah, like you pick up your phone, it's eight nineteen. Yeah, something crazy like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it got to a point where it was kind of scaring me. It was like I'm like, why am I seeing it so much? Like. Just see, multiple yeah, yeah. times a day. Yeah. Like it's just like this is crazy. Like I'm not like a numbers eleven eleven two two two. Like I'm not I'm not into that shit. But I am. But I but the fact that I kept seeing my birthday, I'm like this. There's a reason I'm seeing this. So I specifically had a conversation with my mom about it. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm googling this. Every website says something different. So I, I'm not about to believe anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then she said, "Fuck what anybody else got to say." Like, well, what is like what does it make you feel? Like yeah, you, I just, yeah, 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 yeah. What energy it bring to you or something? Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from that, I feel like it's telling me I gotta trust myself mm. and trust the decisions I'm making to get to where I want to go. So like, not so much taking so much advice mm. or like pleasing people so much or thinking about like. I shouldn't say this. It might make this person might not be happy about it, or I might not say this because you get what I'm saying. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. just really doing me. I'm a, okay. a big. I don't want to say a big. I feel like I've been a big people pleaser and like trying to maintain a certain image. And but I think a one nine is more just like not only like trying to get to where I want to go, kind of like Plan A, mm-hmm. but also just unapologetically being me. Makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. I like that album so, cover. Does, so does it correlate? It doesn't correlate with the album cover. The album cover, um, that just kind of ties into me, like, um, what was that on your birthday? The wrestling. No, nah, that was Christmas. That was. Oh, that, that was, was Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, okay, okay. That, it was that, a birthday. That picture okay. was taken on in Christmas, but um, it kind of just ties in with the whole the wrestling thing. I, I really okay. like the just the aesthetic of the the attitude ever in wrestling, and kind of like the the energy. Sometimes I've I've even like taken things that they use in their performance and their theatrics and try to apply it into my shows or in my music or in my you get what I'm saying like yeah. I try to incorporate wrestling in all aspects so that was that's a part of that that thing. Okay, that's dope. Let's get into the album. Let's talk about it. We're gonna so if people don't know. I break down albums uh, and I uh, basically song by song, you know and. I, you know, it's a, it's a feeling or something like, you know, maybe I hear something, a bar or it's something, I just describe it how I mm-hmm. feel in a sense, right? Yeah. So I'm going to break the first record down and then I, if you, you can, you talk about the, the, the same record. So I'm going to talk okay. about Safe and then I'll go to the next one, 819, and do the same okay. thing. So um, let's talk about it. Marquis Filthy, 819. Uh, number one is called Safe. Yes. And the way I describe it is uh, um, I say, I need a safe. The beat is so trapped. I sold three bricks just listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I say rapper's flow uh, mirrored the track, and I love the chorus on Safe. So let's talk about Safe, man. Let's, let's talk about the first track, the opening. This is this is the song that's just going to catch people's attention. Let's talk about it. Uh, Safe, all right. So Safe was the first song I recorded kind of like during the pandemic. Okay. Um. We'll probably get more into it, but like I dropped the Deeper Than Filthy February 2020. Yeah. The pandemic came March 2020, and then I kind of like took a little step back from music, and then um I got myself together, and that was the first song I recorded. Safe. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. I like it, man. I like it. It's a good start of the album. You know what I mean? It's like it, it's gonna it's catchy. Like I said, the hook is catchy. It's going to mm-hmm. get people to be like, oh, what's next? Yeah. You know what I mean? And what's next is number two, 819. Uh, the evil, creepy tones haunt the track. Beat is hypnotizing. You know, I'm in the zone right there when I hear this. That beat got me. I'm like, what happened? My wallet? Take it. Take it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Filthy matches the energy again on the track, man. And, you know, and the reason I, that's a compliment because when an artist, Whenever I say an artist is matching the track, they're not wasting no one's time. They're not wasting mm. this. their time. They're not wasting the producer's time, yeah. engineer's time. Yeah. Oh, bef- before we talk about uh, 819, who's the producer for Safe? Western Beats. Western Beats. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, you want to 
is it a, is it a guy, a group, or like, what do you mean, what's the is it, is it a couple I think, people? I think it's a guy. It's just a um, YouTube producer. He has, okay. He has five okay. Beats, yeah. okay. Cool. Cool. Because I just want to know, like, if if it's if it's because some some artists have more yeah. relationships with their producers. I, f- I feel like I didn't really explain how Safe really came about. Okay. So here's the thing. With so I dropped the album, and um, the pandemic hit. So. I have I was like on the road doing shows like I was on okay. the road but this or that obviously got halted immediately mm-hmm. and um, even like the music videos and shit for like shit that I had planned that got halted I like you remember the pandemic Yo, yeah. we were scared to well, go remember, outside hey. at one point <laughs> we, we didn't want to go I remember I, I was taking out the trash holding my breath <laughs> Yo, I had gloves on for everything <laughs> anything you can think of I'm, a, I'm gloved up man so that kind of that messed me up. I'm not gonna lie. That messed me up. That had me like that had my head in the bad space. Yeah. I worked on I worked on the album real hard, and yeah. then just for all that shit to just be halted. And then I remember, um, I kind of for promotion, I kind of had to adjust my plans. Yeah, of so course. I, I had to do. I had to lean more on like the um, sending my shit out to blogs and websites yep. and yep. shit like that to yep. get the word out. And when I did that, I think I sent out sent it out to maybe like say 10 maybe like around 10 okay. blogs and shit like that playlists and all that shit only one motherfucker was like yeah I'll this is for it. deeper than rap yeah okay only okay. one person was like only one publication went through with putting my shit out i think it was like a spotify playlist or some shit yeah those that two i got real discouraged from that the discouragement from the that shit and the discouragement from the pandemic fucked me up yeah, I, I think just, everybody got discovered. I took pandemic, I took a step back. Like mm-hmm. I really was like, nah. And that goes into the I know. But before we started recording, you asked me about the name change. Yeah, I did. I did ask about the name change. So, so it's, but it's, I it's, called it deeper than rap, deeper than at, rap at first. first. Yeah. And then when I I took I took the the album down after all that shit happened, and then when I put it back up, I decided to call it deeper than filthy. Oh, so you changed the name. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why I changed it. Because like, um, I took the album down. Yeah. And when I put it back up, I just kind of changed it. It's more like strategic reasoning. Okay, because I figured I, I was, I remember looking for it online and then I couldn't find it. And I think I went to your Instagram and I'm mm-hmm. like, and then I saw you change the change. I'm like, oh, we got served by Rick Ross yeah. or something. Like, yo, something happened. I wish. <laughs> something happened, man. But, yo, I I'm, 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 I'm glad. No, but, yo, but, but maybe it brought you more attention exactly. to the album. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a, yeah that would have been dope. That's But I was like, uh-oh, somebody, something happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, now I'm glad you explained that because I, I just, I remember, like, if I ever talk to this dude, I'm going to max ask him about that, yeah. n- that name change in the album because it's my favorite yeah. album from you so far. So I'm like, I was like, yo, dude, I got to. It's gotta be something yeah. crazy, another yeah. story. But <laughs> so uh, we would talk about number two, eight one nine. I, you know, I described it uh, earlier. Um, I said the evil, creepy tones haunt the track. Uh, beat is hypnotizing, uh, but filthy matches the energy uh, of the track. So eight one nine, talk about this track, number two. Eight one nine is a that's a that's really a performance track. Like, I can't wait to perform that at a show. Like that's I'm that's yeah you the re- specific yeah, like you reason tell- why I made that song. Just, just to perform. Um, I like that. I like that. Uh, I can't even really. There's, there's really no real backstory. I just heard the beat. I was like, this is crazy. And then, yeah, just every. So I got, you just gave me a question though. Like, so a lot of people, you know, they build records. They're doing records for you to say this record's gonna be for me to perform. I'm, I'm a, and mm-hmm. then you kind of cater to that. Yeah. That's the story. That's the story. Yeah. Because like. A lot of people just write, and then they be like, if they get a hit, then they put it on stage. You're already mm-hmm. saying, I'm about to do a stage joint. Yeah. Like, you're making chess moves, not chess. Yeah. I mean, not checkers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So you're already saying, yo. Yeah. I'm doing mm-hmm. this, you know? So I like that. I like that. So that's the story, really, yeah. man. So I like that, man. Let's go to number three, uh, Freak. Uh, filthy, man. The name Filthy. No, it's like, <laughs> Filthy. No, <I'm> just <laughs> number three, Freak, man. It's a, it's a solid rendition of uh, Missy Elliott's Freak. Yeah. Uh, of you know, you know, freak, freak hit song, right? Um, he does a good job keeping the excitement going. Like, like, I really like believe that when people do interact with a a, a hit record that's already a hit record mm-hmm. or something, or they then they m- remix it or they yeah. do whatever they you know um 
you know, do some other production, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever to do with it. Um, it's a compliment first mm -hmm. to the artist. Okay. It's a compliment to Missy and, and her staff mm -hmm. or Timbaland or whoever made the beat. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah. I think you did a great job with this remix. Mm -hmm. That's what people might be calling a remix, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. But I'm saying a remix of the song. But y'all kind of, what producer did this? Is the same producer? His name is si Sayonara. Sayonara. Yeah. Now, yeah. did I get this? Did I get this? This producer for eight one nine. That's also Sayonara. That's Sayonara. Yeah, I just want to make sure. We want to make sure he gets yeah, his props. Yeah, yes, sir. So Sayonara, Sayonara, crazy beat. Say it again, Sayonara. Nah, nah. Oh my, like, like Sayonara. Like, Sayonara, like, yeah. Lord. I'm a, I don't, I don't know I'm what fucking starting. language is that. But Sayonara, that's uh, what is that? Sayonara, Sayonara. What is it? The Japanese. Is it Japanese. Yeah, look at the Japanese. Yeah. So, no, shout out to uh, you know, all producers. I want them to get their credits, yeah, man. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to number four, Filthy Season Three. Uh, track feels like uh, like. <laughs> like Michael Jordan dunk, <laughs> like you know, what I'm saying like this feels like a Michael Jordan dunk, man. You know, just this record. I'm like, oh, where this record come from? You know, like you listen to the record. Oh shoot, uh, the record hypes you know your senses and bleeds with passion. It's filthy season, I say. Uh, talk about this one. This one got me excited because I'm getting into the record, but then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. kind of like you know, what's up? So that one. So here's the. There's there was another time where I stopped I stopped making music and another time probably mm -hmm. like what what are we in 2024 mm -hmm. I say around the end of 2022 a little bit at the beginning of 2023 I stopped making music yeah when I got back into it I was I felt like I needed to get my pen back like my bars back up mm. so I started just rapping over like beats that I liked. Okay. And just shit like like just just, just rapping. Like yeah, I, yeah. Putting your pen to all yeah, the all the just, all the crazy beats. Yeah, just going, whatever. That I I originally wrote Filthy Season Three to Smoking on My Ex by Scissor. Oh, I love Scissor. I Yo, I love Scissor, dog. Don't bring up yeah, Scissor, dog. Is yeah, Scissor one of your uh like one of your um your passes? I don't know if you're dating or married or anything, but is that like one of your passes? Scissor looks great. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, I don't know your relationships. I'm just saying, is that one of your passes? I'm just saying, like, SZA, whoever I married, dog, uh, if I marry Holly Berry, SZA still got to be a pass, dog. Uh, that's all I got to say, yo. SZA crazy. City. Get in my zone, I'm active. I did this verse for practice. No, there ain't shit I'm lacking. I will eat through you niggas with melodies or rapping. Pick your poison. The boys annoy you. How do y'all record them? I heard I'm not a people person. Perfect. I'm a prophet. Cause I don't write these words and when they flowing, I can't stop it. Try to top it. Mm. My ex in Texas, she probably what my biggest regret is. So I'll be smoking on that bitch until I'm fucking breathless. The strongest soldiers be the hardest test to bring her all the lessons. I can turn the loss into a blessing. Watch the method. Shout out Marquis Slope. I can eat the with the melodies of rapping. When I'm attacking, I see black men. So come pick your poison. Them boys are noggin. How y'all record them? I try to avoid them. My ex in Texas, what my biggest regret is. I'm smoking on until I'm breathless. The strongest soldiers be the hardest test to bring all the lessons on some alchemist shit I could turn it lost into a yeah so, <laughs> studio equipment out there. <laughs> so when I um after I recorded that That's fire. I was like nah I'm I'm going crazy on this so yeah. um I just found the original beat and then switched the flow around plugged in some words took some out and then yeah Dang. and who did Filthy Season 3 beat who did that one um his name is Bandit Loose Bandit Loose Bandit like bandit, bandit, like Bandit. Yeah, like a Bandit. bandit. Yeah, oh, bandit, bandit Loose. loose. Yeah. <laughs> these names, I swear these producer names are cracking me up. <laughs> and then I'll be on tape trying to, you know, <laughs> pronounce them. Maybe some crazies out there. I'll be like, yo, dog, I'm going to name this dude P. Diddy. Like, so weird, <laughs> like, whatever it is. Like, not P. Diddy. That was a bad name. No <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to think of that was the first weird name that came to me, man. I don't know why, man. But, you know, let's go to number, let's go to number, <laughs> let's go to number five, man. Number five is called 45. I'm pretty 45. sure there's a, a, a reason behind that yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so on this one, I say Marquis Filthy's voice is an instrument in its own right. Uh, his flow shines next, man. It's just next, man. Um, it's soulful. Uh, then you listen to the rhymes and start to admire them as well. Uh, we get a southern bounce and an organic rap flow and a catchy chorus once again. Uh, so number 45, talk about the, I guess... The right. symbolics of the 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 number forty five, you know, because I'm thinking the president. I'm guessing. Nah. Um, and then, nah. Who, then, who, then who produced it? Um. So no, the right. producer no, is is it. noisy. One of my favorite producers on YouTube. He got crazy. Noisy. Beats. Okay. Noisy. Yeah. Right. Um. Uh -huh. 
Uh, that was so I told you I kind of stopped rapping tw- from the end of 2022 to the end of 2000, the beginning of 2023. 45 was like the first song that I put out after that. Okay. Like in like a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For and the whole concept behind it was like Michael Jordan returning with the 45. Oh yeah, cause so, I'm thinking, why? I'm like 45. Is that Obama? I'm thinking it was Obama 45. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, it's Jordan coming back. It's Jordan with, coming with, back because he had the 45. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I like it's, that. and it's funny that you say the song before that it sounds like a Michael Jordan dunk. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I told. That's what's funny. I'll be doing these reviews and then like with the artists. And this is live. Like the artists don't know. What, you don't know exactly mm-hmm. what I, I wrote at all. You know, this is mm-hmm. everything I'm writing or you know, saying. It's new to you, so it's like you're like what? Yeah. So it's, I, I like to hear you and that's, see your re- the you reaction, and it's organic. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the energy. It's mm-hmm. probably it was meant to be. So, um, real quick, I'm gonna do a verses, man. I got a verses for you, man. You know what I'm saying? Light Word. up the mood, but um, you got truth versus purpose. The songs. Well, Damn. well, and the songs and the the actual words. Truth versus purpose. That's what you know. The songs are like the meaning. The meaning in the songs, man. Like All that's right. why I accent. Like I can't verse. I can meaning, whatever you want to say. I sing. don't know. That's hard. I feel like your truth, your purpose is your truth. Your truth is your purpose. I feel like they go hand in hand. Okay. Like, um, we all got we all got a purpose, whether it's big or small. You get what I'm saying? Like whether my music is to impact the world or it's whether it's impact the little few hundreds of people it reaches, then. That's what it is. That's what my purpose is. If it helps, it helps. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. We all have a purpose, and I feel like that's also that will also falls hand into hand in my truth. Like if you're not really living your truth, you're not in your purpose. You're not serving your purpose, right? Hundred percent. So yeah. I like that. I like that answer. Man. I say, see, you just get some. Get, I want to get more stuff out of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna break it up. That's why I want to break up the interview, the uh, the song, and just and you know throw some questions at you, man. Some daggers. Uh, let's go to number six, man. Uh, sunset. Uh, so I go uh eight one nine. How about eight oh eight for the bass spitting out these speakers, <laughs> man? Lord have mercy, man. Beat smacks. Uh, I ain't gonna say like Will Smith, you know that's that's, that's probably old, but anyway. But <laughs> but while Mister Filthy is smoothly uh mending the relationship, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a relationship record about something. So um, but yeah, uh, talk about sunsets, man. I like this is another this track. Um. So shout out to Fully Surfing for making that beat. Yeah, beat. He's the, from um, Long Beach, California. Okay. He's a um, songwriter and producer. He does his own music too. Oh, he but, does. Um, yeah. Okay. That, he said honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. He sent me that beat. I want to say probably like 2019, 2018. Yeah. I don't know if you know my song "Mine" that I got out the movie theater I do, video. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. He sent me that beat and the Sunset's beat in the same beat pack. Ooh. So, so those are nice. Those yeah, are nice beats, man. He got some. He got some joints. He got some heat. Minute. Then, yeah, yeah. He's he's crazy. Fooly's crazy. Um, man, sunsets. Uh, shit. You know what's crazy about sunsets? The yeah. verse that you hear on Pisces Moon. The yeah. se- the second verse I had originally wrote that to sunsets. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he was there. I don't know if he remembers. He was there in the room when I, when I wrote that shit. He's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He already finished his noodles, man. He's bored, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for your fans, man. Um, Do you have the responsibility of raising your listeners? Of raising your listeners? You know, like, you know. What do you mean by that? Um, Role models. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Do you have the responsibility of raising your listeners? Like you have listeners, you have a fan base. Like, do you do you say to yourself, okay, if I say this, I, I gotta say this because I'm this. I gotta be positive, or I gotta do this. Like, are you are you really thinking about what you're, you're saying before you put it out, basically? Because um, you're raising your listeners. Like, if they if they yeah. whatever age they are, they could be ten right now. Yeah, I feel like right I now. have more, as an artist. I feel like I have more as a, of a responsibility to speak for my listeners. Rather mm. than like your age range, in a sense, not not an age range, but like as for, like most of most of the people that listen to my music is black, so I'm gonna speak for black people. Okay. Most of the if if I don't know something happens where fucking Mexi- Mexicans start bumping my shit crazy, I gotta 
speak on the shit that the, the Mexicans are going through. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I feel like I have more responsibility for that rather than trying to be a good a good role model. I feel like having looking up to your role models comes with discretion as far as, like, I like Kanye, but I can't sit here and agree with everything he oh, says. I would hope not. I'll be out. I'll be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah. I can't sit here. Like, it's, I, I, it's a de- lot of stuff. I, I, like, de- I like Kanye, I've too. I've defended like some crazy stuff. Like, I've been able to see <laughs> past some crazy stuff, but I, I, some stuff is like, all right, my my boy. Love you yeah, to death, yeah, but you, that you, one, you I can't, gotta, I can't rock with you. You got to relax. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so I feel like that's... That comes that comes at your own discretion. Like like you have to have your own yeah. maturity and sensibility to not look up to this person, but at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What question do you get asked the most? Like you know, like in interviews or whatever. Is this is it a question you're like, man, this dude, come on again? Like he ain't original. Uh. I I don't feel bad about it. I understand it, yeah. but it's just probably my name, like. Oh, where's your filthy. name come from? Yeah, that, that makes filthy, sense, though. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I get it. I, I can see if your name was Paul Jones and they yeah. kept that. But where Paul Jones mm. come from? I don't <laughs> know. It's my name. <laughs> but like, but your, part of your part of the, your name is is in your name, so I get yeah. it. I, I, yeah. I like it. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's get back into the album, man. Number seven is called Switch. Uh, the track hits the soul, man. It speaks of optimistic energy. Uh, Marquis Filthy is creating good energy records albums and just you know it, it, it's a good foundation man it's number seven switch man let's talk about that that song in particular yeah, that was a song i made just thinking about like when i moved to california and, and all my homies and all my friends was back at home okay like um it was just kind of like a um i felt almost kind of like i had failed with the east coast or something you mean like failed I failed like in a certain in terms of like we was, like I said in the song we was supposed to been up on the road now like yeah. we we was supposed to been touring and being yeah, all successful yeah, 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 yeah. and shit so now that the fact I'm I'm leaving I'm separated from y'all we, it wasn't supposed to be like this oh okay so from there it was like I gotta come up with a new plan I gotta come up with a new strategy to like get this thing going you get yeah, what I'm yeah. saying so that's what that song's about. So when you moved to California, was that part of your plan? Like, like, or was that something that was a? Um, yes and no. It kind of happened suddenly. It yeah. was more like a family thing. Oh, okay. It wasn't. It wasn't, so it wasn't like a business plan, yeah, music nah, thing. It was more like way more like personal family shit. Is the reason okay. why I moved okay. to California. And also but did you learn a lot from the West Coast? Like the differences from Hell music yeah. and just whatever the environment, the condition, Hell whatever, yeah. whatever. That, whatever. I know where you were at. Where going you... to Cali, coming back. Like, I think that's what made me like a man. Like oh, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Gave you like, like yeah. Like okay, this is how you need to move now. Like move forward. This is. More responsibility came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Cali was like, yeah, Cali was intense. <laughs> Cali was intense. I was in. I bet, man. I, I was in the, uh, the jumping the, obstacles. I was in something. the desert, so that was like a. It was. A I was gonna ask you what part, but yeah, I was in the. I was in the desert. It's called the high desert, like Victorville. So okay. even just adjusting to like the air was different. Like, is even the desert air, air, air like whatever air whatever yeah all that <laughs> all of it choking it yeah it's completely different out there it's good Damn, i ain't know man let's go do one verses before we go back to the album um the olympics just passed i don't know if you watched the olympics but um track and field versus gymnastics those are two famous events that a lot of people like watching mm-hmm. which one do you have to, if you had to pick one i'm picking gymnastics Simply for the fact that uh, Noah Lyles, mm-hmm. the the black dude, mm-hmm. um, he just he just won the gold. He caught COVID or whatever. I don't like the way he's been coming at the NBA. So I'm going with I'm going with the girls. Oh, for real? Was yeah, it, I didn't um, even know. I didn't know that part. He um, mean coming at the girls, like the the girls. No, he was he's NBA? been coming at the NBA. So I'm going with gymnastics. I'm not going oh, with track and field just because wow. of him. <laughs> Yo, I didn't even know that. Dude. Nah, I didn't no, know that. Nah, I didn't know real. that. He said something about the if the NBA. If if you win the finals in the NBA, you're not a world champion. Yeah. Then he says something about um. He deserves a shoe more than Anthony Edwards because Anthony oh, Edwards he- never been in the finals. 
<laughs> on this dude, man? Still, still, he yeah. just, I don't know. You got to see what kind of <laughs> indica he's smoking. You got to ask him past He ain't smoking enough. That's the <laughs> issue. Little baby, baby. That's what they say. Relax him, right? Tell him to shut the up. Like, shut up. <laughs> now, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Let's get back to the album. The last track is called His Story featuring yeah. D. Burroughs. Mm-hmm. It's funny how they said D. Burroughs. It sounded like D. Burroughs from... Uh, I don't I don't think I know who it is, but it's not like a Celtic player, D Burrow. Am I going crazy? Oh D Brown. D, D Brown. He did this though. Oh the yeah, where yeah. Burrows come from? Maybe it's a, maybe some somebody I know in my <laughs> in my head. I'm like, D Burrows, do I know somebody from D Burrows? Uh, anyway, you might have heard of him. Yeah, he, it just sounds familiar. He's, he's made music yeah. around Boston. Maybe, yeah, for a long time old, back in the day. Is he older, like older guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah maybe yeah. I do know him. Maybe yeah. I do know him. But anyway, uh his story featuring D Burrows. Uh this is a vulnerable song. Mm-hmm. It's a sad and gloomy record. Uh, first, thanks for sharing. You know, thanks for sharing. You know, this this record and you know whatever you shared on it. These are the songs that heal others as well. You yeah. know, um, solid record, solid song to end on. Um, I immediately return to start. So like it's some 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 albums, they they miss the mark with that first record and that last record. Mm-hmm. You get the first and last record kind of good. Of course, you can get you got to get everything. Kind of good, but like get a good flow okay, of the record. The first and last, the most. Yeah, but the most, you at least get those yeah, right. Those so people are, go, oh, yeah. let me go back to listen to this joint again. Those are the most. And important. I think you, I think you really did it. So talk about number eight, uh, his story featuring D Burrows. Um, so that's a song about my cousin D Burrows. He passed in 2014. Um, that was just a song. I feel like I, I, I knew I had to make at some point. Um, he was a music artist. Um, he was doing his thing around Boston, like with my dad and shit. Okay. Like that. They're both artists. Okay. Um, and yeah, I I mean I say everything really in the song, like just yeah yeah you, know, you get just, you get just you know his funeral and just seeing him in his casket that did a lot to me, and um, I think about him a lot. Like when I tell you, like I, when I start making music and all that shit, yeah. it's like he just be lingering in my head. Sometimes I'll get a reminder of him or something yeah. like that. So yeah. like. That's yeah. Um, I want to make songs like that a staple, and at the end of all my projects, yeah, yeah. Um, making songs about um just just other people, people that like you know stories like that. Like I I did a song called His Pain on Deeper Than Filthy. Yeah, I like that one. I, yeah. About um my boy who has epilepsy, but he yeah. still comes to my shows. So I definitely wanted to shine a light on that situation, and mm-hmm. um. Yeah, yeah. So I was just listening to that part. album the other day before because I know I was gonna be sent down with you. And mm-hmm. I'm like, let me go listen to my favorite album. Like, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just refresh my memory, man. But yeah, it's really a great album, man. And you. um, you know, I'm I still sit with it and I still promote it. I still tell people to the, 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 the grab it, go listen to it, and stuff Thank like you. that, man. So yeah, it's a great, great record, man. Thank you. Um, the 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 baby wrestler album cover is nostalgic. Um, mm-hmm. I do like it, you know, because uh, um, it reminds me of my past. Mm-hmm. Um, what else reminds you of your past besides photographs? Um, wrestling. Um, a lot of music, like um, even like kind of recently, I've been listening to a lot of the the songs that I liked hearing growing up. Um, driving around with my dad, like when he he would bring okay. me to school or wherever. So what was he wherever. into? Like, was he into the like the mob deeps? The the he was, he was into a lot of Nas. Nas, I think Nas, Nas yeah, probably his Nas favorite died. rapper. Nas, a lot of Nas. Yeah, like, Nas yeah. yeah. Um, all of Kanye, up until I probably he didn't listen to the Eight Hundred Eight album. Okay, he he dropped off yeah. there. He dropped, <laughs> but he did listen to my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and okay. Watch the Throne, and then after that he stopped. Um, <laughs> every Jay Z album, every fucking Jay Z, every Jay Z, yeah, every J- every, every it don't Jay-Z, matter, every Jay Z, every album. everything's classic to him yeah. now. He, my dad's also a producer, so okay. sometimes he'll buy. He, I remember he bought um, his he bought this Alicia Keys album, the one where she had um, if you at the un. Unthinkable. If you ask me, I'm ready. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I don't know what that. I, I don't know called. all that. I, yeah. I, I remember he played that album and um, he bought that album and even the 
Kerry Hilson's album. Ooh, Kerry um, Hilson was hitting back yeah, then. Yeah, I forgot what yeah, that album Kerry was Yeah, Kerry Hilson called, was hit. Oh, man. I just remember him buying albums like that and telling me, like, listen to the production. Like, listen to, like, yeah. who makes the beats and shit like that. Like, Quality, he, everything. He the, got me on, he got the, me on the, it early. Real instrumental guy yeah. drumming or something in the yeah. credits or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, he had yeah. to, So he was, was detail-orientated. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. that. So that kind of created your, 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 yeah. your, your drive Even a little the, bit. Um, when 50 Cent and Kanye had the, the battle. Oh, yeah, with the, with the, the album. It was a friend, the friendly battle of the, of the album coming I, out. I remember listening yeah. to the radio, and they were talking like, oh, who, they going head-to-head, who's going to win? I remember I asked him, I said, whose album you going to buy? He said, I'm buying both of them. Yeah, he, buying both of them. He bought both of them. Yeah, he bought both of them joints, dog. I bought both of them joints, dog. But I just want to put Kanye it out there. Wing. He played the he Kanye the album, album more. Yeah, he had the better album. He, he, nah, yeah. he had, the, had the better album. He did. But shout out to Curtis, because that was the album that came out for 56. Mm-hmm. Um, are people surprised that you're not a Southern artist? For real? Yeah, you sound Southern a little bit. You don't think so? I feel like Am I, I get... Am I crazy? I think I get, a, yeah, I think I get a lot of my influence and my swag from the South. Yeah. Oh, okay. Probably, yeah. It's, but it's in your tone, I think, too. Your your voice, like I said earlier, your voice is an instrument. You you don't think you sound like no one ever ever said you sound like a southern artist. That's strange. I have heard some people say like sometimes you sound like southern a little bit. A some, little bit? Sometimes <laughs> that's more like California. <laughs> Do you um? Did you order oh, no, earlier? You just dissed basketball, right? Oh no, you no, like no. basketball. You yeah, like NBA. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm about to say, hold on. I'm, I'm big you on talking about the okay? But you talking about the other thing? You talking yeah. about the, the guy dissing NBA? Yeah. Okay, I'm a bad. Um, Allen Iverson versus Kobe. Ooh, I wanted to be Allen Iverson growing up. Okay, so I, I go, <laughs> go Allen Iverson. I he said I want to be. Yeah. Oh man, I was gonna go Kobe. Kobe's my man. Dog. Yeah, Kobe. Kobe's, 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 Kobe's definitely you know mom, Mamba mentality. All that shit. He's, I love Kobe. Yeah. Nah, he's my boy. Sometimes I watch like the the YouTube motivational. Oh, shit, yeah. just listen to Kobe just to get, like, if I feel like I need to, like, really zone in. Yo, because he got, a lot of people starting to use those on on their albums because mm. I didn't know he talked that much. Yeah. You know, because he was quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kobe was a quiet dude, but, like, he, he this really, clips, good clips He him. did a lot of shit those last, what, four years he yeah. wasn't playing in the league, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he did, he did books and he yeah. started doing, he like. He won Emmys and shit. Yeah, yeah. he was doing, he was like, doing producing films and yeah. stuff. Would you ever want to yeah. produce a film? I know you're Hell getting into yeah. production and. Doing films, Hell what is, would yeah. films be next? Hell yeah! What's, what's, what's going on with that? Um, I'm working on like music videos and shit like oh, that. Nice. But okay. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've I have been trying to learn how to like write write scripts. Ooh, so, yeah. That's what I'm, I was one of my questions. Yeah. I, you already answered it, yeah. but that's because that's what you know. Um, I'm a writer mm-hmm. and I wrote a couple books. And For real? that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, and uh, you know, I'm proud of it. That was one mm-hmm. of my goals to write mm-hmm. a book. And then when I wrote seven. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? This is great, That's you know? So, um, so, you know, I'm trying to you know get them on audio and try to get, do all. I'm doing yeah. all that stuff. So I'm, I'm into That's that. So, so I, I was thinking about writing the script next, too. I was thinking about Ice Cube and how he got into his story was, you know, John Singleton got him into it. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. like, if you can write raps, you can write a script. He's like, what, what? And he wrote Friday with, you know, uh, I think the other guy. You know, um, but he wrote Friday mm-hmm. with his friend. You That's know what I'm saying? Up. And uh, and and that's where that came from. Like somebody was like, "Yo, that's you can write up. this. You can write rhymes. You can write a script." Mm-hmm. So, are you working on a script now, or, or are you just kind of like playing around? I, actively at the moment, no. <laughs> but I I did I did write two short films. I what? have written two short films. Oh, you did? Get yeah, out of here. I, I swear. <laughs> I swear I've written them. They out there it. somewhere? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, oh, well, like in your notebook. In my something. notebook, yeah. Okay, okay, notebook, okay. Yeah, but I have written You're two. sitting on them. Yeah. yeah. Sitting on them like Chrome. Sitting yeah. on them like Chrome. Well, um, what stamps do you have in your passport? Like, do you have a passport? That's my important. My passport is not My passport is naked. I do have one. It's but you do have, have a passport. No stamps. I do have one. I, I, and I bring it up, you know, I try to sneak it in any interview. I think everybody should have a passport. Mm-hmm. And get out there, and eventually I, you can. I, I know the couple of last to. couple of years was crazy, I want but I'm, to, yeah. you know what I'm saying. But get out there. I want to so uh, bad. Oh, you got to, you got to, man. Uh, what are you doing to get to the highest happiness percentage in your life? Um, I think that that goes into the album. It went on like yeah. just following what I want to do. Like that's the only way you're gonna be happy is just doing what you what you want to do and prioritizing what you think you need to prioritize, I guess. Like, that's, that's, 
that's really what what I've been doing. Just really, um, even putting this project out was, um, it, it wasn't the easiest. Yeah. Um, I don't really, ha- I I don't ha- really have the setup at my crib no more, like okay. right right in my room. So it's a it's a little bit different, like finding time to come in here, and like get studio time, yeah, get finding the alone room, time yeah. to like try to write real quick or something like that. Um, just adjusting to that is um that's been different, but um. I made sure this project came out right like right when it needs to. Um I have I don't know why but I have this thing about leap years. I don't know if you noticed that, but like every leap year is when I make sure I release. Two thousand sixteen I dropped my first album. Deeper than filthy. I think I, I, dropped I, probably, on leap I probably, you know what's funny? I probably did realize that but didn't write it as a question. Pisces why? Pisces yeah, Moon crazy. I dropped on leap year and this year, um this is gonna sound crazy oh, but on uh, eight nineteen this year, I'm turning twenty seven. Eight plus nineteen twenty seven. So I had to get it out this year. Oh, <laughs> dude, this is a, you are the numbers, man. <laughs> Have you ever read any the books on numbers and like like you know twenty one means this or seven? Well, people know like seven is like the God Hour. Like not, yeah. not like not, you don't have to go into those. I, I do, numbers, but there are things I plays have, on numbers all the time. On I have like. researched that because I told you when like when I was trying to figure out why I'm yeah. with this eight one nine shit means. I have researched it. So you but was messing around with it. Yeah. It's hard for me to like put a definitive like uh, 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 theme or yes. anything behind it because I feel like everyone says something different. Some people, okay. some I don't know. It's just everyone says something different, so it's hard for me to believe. I'm I'm a I'm very like factual based. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we going we going Lakers versus Celtics. I, and the only reason I'm asking this man is because I'm a Lakers fan in Boston, mm-hmm. so I always and you know. I don't know if you're near my age, but, you know, I grew up because, like in the Lakers, because of my uncles, first mm-hmm. of all, you know, um, the Michael Coopers with the socks to the, to the, to the knee, you know, Magic Johnson. But uh, the Celtics really, I don't know why they don't like the Celtics, but I just grew up, I was loyal, I've been loyal to the Lakers all my life. So, Lakers versus Celtics, what do you think? Um, I got to ride with the, the Celtics, but... Right now, this this Celtics team, Tatum Brown, I don't like this team. They just won. What do you mean you don't yeah, like the team? How you don't like the team? I don't know. I, I'm just not. A, I'm not a fan. They just won a championship. Oh, yeah. it, it was the chemistry, the, the the way they. I don't think they seem they seem kind of off. Any the energy's off. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just never been a fan of the team. I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. The players. I'm more the, of a, like a like that 08 team. That was that's my Pierce heart and all them. That's what that team okay, was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, I even kind of was liking them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know, I'm a Laker mm-hmm. fan, so I was mm-hmm. like, oh, Celtics got a dope, man. It was but, good to see them win. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. good to see them finally get over the hump. Tatum's been there for his whole. So I'm career. glad they won, even though I'm a Lakers fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a hater. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, it was fun, good to know, see them win. Yeah. You know, I'm born from I'm born in Boston, y'all. Mm-hmm. So they, they don't don't beat me yet. <laughs> but uh, um, I seen on your, I think it's on Instagram. You like Cam Patterson? You know who that is? A comic, Cam Patterson. I thought I saw Cam Patterson on your. Oh Instagram. yeah, 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 yeah. Black I went, new comic. I wouldn't say I'm like I'm a big fan, but he just got some funny videos. So okay, because like, I was gonna say just... Cam Patterson versus Hans Kim, because I didn't know how deep you was into Kill Tony. Do you watch nah, Kill Tony? Nah, nah. All right, so so that's where he's from. Mm-hmm. So it's a show called Kill Tony. You go on YouTube, watch it. Kill Tony, I better get some money from this. <laughs> anyway, you know, because the show's big, it's huge. Yeah. But you don't need me. But that's where he, he he's getting these comics from, mm-hmm. and I, I I wanted to pay him up with, because Cam Patterson is one of the hottest comedians on that show, he's and, hilarious. And, he's, and he's doing his thing. He's touring, he's going yeah, crazy. He's hilarious. But they got somebody named Hans Kim there doing the same thing. He's mm-hmm. aging, and he's doing the same thing, kind of big like okay, him. That's what's up. I never so I was like, him. I was like, yo, I wonder if he's deep into Kill Tony like I me. I know him, all the yeah. you know a lot of people that came from the show mm-hmm. and doing their thing. So okay, that one we're gonna scratch that one. How about Gary V versus Socrates? You know who Gary V is, mm-hmm. right? He's yeah. always doing quotes. He's always yeah. doing. He's like Socrates. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know how deep you are the philosophers. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm like, I know Gary V is a philosopher. Homer, all those guys. Yeah. yeah. Versus Socrates. Like, who, who you who you go with, man? I'm like Gary V is dope, man. I don't know. What you go with Gary V? <laughs> I'm gonna go with Socrates because he he laid the foundation for Gary V. Yeah. There won't be no Gary V without Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, of course. I'll joke around, but um. Uh, next one is Wiz Khalifa versus Travis Scott. Damn, you see what he just did to me, bro. I, I was researching. Y'all gotta see yourself. No, no. Come on, man. 
Yo, Wiz Khalifa that's versus Travis crazy. Scott. Yo, wow. So let me save this one for almost wow. last. Wow, holy shit. I got more questions. Damn, let me, that's let me, a let me tough one. You on that one. That's a tough one. <laughs> for me, that's tough. Got him. I'm not, I got to get him. I'm going to have to go with, this is a very intricate reasoning. I'm going to have to go with Travis Scott. Just for the fact that I fuck with all eras of Travis Scott, and yeah. I'm more of like a very specific era of Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, I'm really big on probably how fly, like the current the tape he did with Currency. Um, yeah, Cushion OJ, Cabin Fever, Cushion, oh, yep. Taylor Alderdice, Man. his first album Rolling Papers, and then from there that's it. Just mm. that section. So probably like that's what oh nine to like twenty twelve. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That shit. And and kinda recently he's been putting out a lot of albums. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the only one that I really kinda fuck with is the one he did with Cardo. It's an album called Cardo Got Wings. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, you're a deep I'm, fan, yeah, man. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Trav just because I, I fuck with all the Travis Scott albums. I'm very selective uh, uh, with Wiz. Uh, uh, but yeah, Wiz was Wiz was definitely my favorite rapper at one point. That's <laughs> why so I was like, I gotta get this dude on something. I was like, damn, I'm trying to trip him up with the verses, yeah. and I'm like, this dude ain't, ain't working, man. Why is that working? I'm glad I got you on that one. Um, this one was probably for me. Um, if you got some verses, you know, we can mm-hmm. keep going. But I got some more questions. If you think of some, just, okay. just say it out loud. Uh, but Hit Boy versus Diamond D. Who's Diamond D? That's why I said it. Okay. You know who Diamond D is mm-hmm. at all? You know who Hit Boy is though. Yeah, of course. Hit yeah. Boys are what? Producer. Okay, so Diamond D's a producer too, but Diamond D and, and Hit Boy raps. Mm-hmm, yeah. Diamond yeah. D raps too. So uh, Diamond D digging in the crates. Have you heard that before? Digging in the crates. Mm-mm. Fat Joe. Um, um, I think about uh, trying not off the bat. Um, all the people from digging in the crates. Diamond D, Fat Joe. Uh, was it AZ and Showbiz? Showbiz and AG. Was I think uh, uh, Big L was in it a little bit. Okay. Big L was in it. Um. Damn, I'm trying to think of, I don't want to mess up everybody's name. It's more people. I can't, yeah. It's more dope rappers mm-hmm. in it. Excuse me, y'all, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just off the cuff. Yeah. But Diamond D, you need some home with it, dude. Okay. I like this. I like I like Word. the... This is because this, I do this, too, because I'm like, mm-hmm. cause i thinking, I know he like Hit Boy, but I'm going to put Hit Boy against another legendary producer that's still doing it. Mm-hmm. still out there, but he's still okay. doing stuff. He just put out an album. Okay, you know right. what I mean? Diamond D just put out an album Friday. Okay. Right? You know, he's producing. He he, he don't rap on this one, but he do got albums. He raps, and he's, okay. he's a better rapper than a lot of rappers. Okay. Just putting it that way. That's all I got I'm to listen, say. I'm so, going to listen to him. Oh, man. But but you like Hit Boy. Yeah. Who, hell yeah. who would be a, a good person to battle Hit Boy? A, a good versus then? How about that? Didn't he do something with. Um, did he do a versus already? He you did. know, versus are coming back. I don't yeah, know if you know he that. did. He kind of started it. He started Versus? Not, he did like one of the first ones before was Versus Versus. He did, it was Boy Wonder, Drake's producer. Oh. They did like an Instagram live. Oh, then he did do yeah, one. Yeah, super early in the pandemic. I remember they did one. I think it was maybe, it, yeah, yeah. But the people who did one before the pandemic, that was, it was Timbaland and Swizz, I think. I remember they did one before, like before the pandemic or something. Yeah. But yeah, um, Hit Boy, um, who got good beats? Hit, hit boy, he need to go up against somebody new, like, like a newer, newer person. Yeah, but or but or it, nah, I take that back. Hit, hit boy and Cardo. Cardo, Cardo got one of my, Cardo has one of my favorite catalogs okay. other than Hit Boy. The uh, Cardo got Wangs. He did a lot. So he did a lot of stuff. I probably don't know yeah. about it. Some. Oh, whenever you, oh, hear, we don't that, know about. Whenever you hear that cow, that cowbell, that don't. That yeah. that cow that cowbell you know, that that's vintage with Khalifa that's that's Cardo right there yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah yeah he needs more cowbell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he needs yeah. more cowbell man yeah Cardo was hit boy would have me screaming <laughs> oh, okay I, I like that I like yeah. that one man so music family man father a rapper and a mother a former dance company owner yeah uh what was it like I guess growing up under that tutelage. Just a, just a lot of music, a lot, a, a lot of music. Yeah. Like all, like all the time. Um, my mother, Who's your mother into? You? I think you talked about your father's music. Yeah, my Who's mom. Your mother my music? mom's more into like town or what? The pop shit, like whatever was popping at the time. So her two, two big like I know every fucking Beyonce album, <laughs> yeah. and every Michael Jackson album. Okay. That's so all the pop. All the pop. 
Hands down. Hands, whatever. Yeah, I know all that shit. Stuff like that. Um, Chris Brown's first album. She loved that shit. Oh, His very good. first Damn. album. That was a good one. Crazy. Um, Crazy. Music Soul Child. Jamie Foxx. She's big on Jay-Z, too. Like, she we, is? She loves Jay-Z. Everybody loves Jay-Z. Really big on Jay-Z. <laughs> um, a lot of... A lot of big like old school New um New York rap like Rakim, um okay. Slick Rick, um Big Daddy Kane. So she like the nineties. Heavy D. Kinda, um yeah, 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 yeah. 90s, yeah baby. a lot of that shit. Yeah. 90s, 80s, 90s, yeah. late eighties, nineties. And a lot of a lot of bad boy. Um def my, my, my aunt is really big in, into like bad boy. Bad boy, yeah, yeah. Um that was some early style and it uh, started taking over. Who who is Jay Z Rockefeller? Rockefeller, yeah. Rockefeller, yep, yep. yep. So yeah, they into that. All right, now I think I already told you uh, my favorite uh, album is Deeper Than Filthy, but it's Deeper Than Rap, Deeper Than Filthy. Yeah. It's interchangeable. Well, yeah, yeah. W- will you ever uh, release that on vinyl? Eventually. That's a good question. I, I feel like if, if if people want it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Well, because I like, I guess like, I guess I can ask you now. Like, how do you? Did it do well? Does it do well? Like, like I, I, like I don't know how people judge it. I don't even know I how. I feel like I feel, feel like it would have you know, it would have did better if, because like, if like I a, didn't take it down. Like I kind of fucked up my momentum taking it down. Oh, when you, okay. So I and think you put it back. Okay, yeah, I, see I think it would have did better if I kept it up and like just rolled with the punches rather than getting all crazy about it and shit. But mm. um, people still listen to it. I still get plays for it to this day. So I think it did what it was supposed to do. Because the reason I want to talk about that album, I came a fan from that album, Deeper Than Filthy, Deeper Than Rap, but, you know, like mm-hmm. you said, it's interchangeable. Um, when did you become a fan of yourself? When I made that album. When you made that album, but that particular Tango, album. Yeah, that album, that's when I was like, okay, I could, I could really do this shit, yeah. Oh, the, I like that. And that's your, that was your debut album, right? No, 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 no. No, it wasn't your debut album. Yeah, your second album, yeah. The... Um, I'll show you. When I made this shit right here, this is when I became a fan of myself. I'll, I'll show you. I gotta hear this. When go, I wrote this. Say, say when you made the Out of Reach again. When it was in the uh, So when I made this one, when I wrote this on Out of Reach, this is when I became a fan of myself. I'm sorry that I'm sorry, my sh- underdog. I live so many passion, I'm a real person. I'm not a savage. I got a heart in your brain like these magnum. So I had to stop giving a fuck about their satisfaction. And no weapon found against me shall prosper. Covered in luxury, blessings on my angels. Be wearing Prada. Yeah, that that were that moment when I was that's when that, you was I like, was like, oh shit. Oh, <laughs> that. Now I love that song. That's why I'm glad you. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. I like yeah, that. I like yeah. that. I like that, man. Um. You got a single out, Pisces Moon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great record. Why didn't it make the album? Um. I really like that record. Um. I don't I, know. I, saw, I thought it was a single. I wanted. Me. I just wanted it to when I album. made it. I wanted to get it out. Like I made that. Like kind of. Like you felt good about it. Like a good new single. I made that probably out. like two weeks before it came out. No. Um. Two months before it came out, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. And um. It wasn't on the album because I never really planned for it to be on the album. I never really planned for it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't pick all the songs that were on the album until probably like three weeks ago. I didn't. Oh, okay. I was, so I you had how many songs did you create before you kind of selected the? What do we got? I Nine? don't even know. I just been wrong. making music for the past like four years. Oh, and so you just been steady. Eight one nine was like two, three other projects before it became this. Oh, like it, like I had one ready. I think like two thousand twenty one. Yeah. I had I had a project ready, and then I scrapped it. Two thousand twenty two. I had a pro, I had a project, then I scrapped it because I was gonna do a um, collab project with someone, and that that shit fell through, and. Then from there, I just kept making songs and then ended up on A One Nine. So yeah, that's what like what two three projects. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah. I like that, man. Now was the Glow Up album your college experience? You know, your plan A. Um, I'll say that was my like college age experience. Like I didn't go to college, so that that like would have been the beginning of 
my college, and then okay. deeper than rap would have been like the end of it. Because you didn't go to college. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's why I'm, I asked that question. I don't know if people know that, but because I'm like, a lot of people, and college is not for everybody. I, I just want people to know that college mm-hmm. is not for everyone. It wasn't even for me. I got a degree and I was pissed after that. I mean, I, st- I use, I utilize yeah. it, you know, um, but, you know, I, if, if I knew there was some type of trade or something else I could have took prior or something else I could have did, yeah. I could have saved a lot of money. Yeah. Um, Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, That's why I asked if the, that album was your experience because. I don't want to be in debt. Well, that too. Who doesn't want to be in debt? That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get that, man. <laughs> nah, man. Um, so, my last, my, one of my last questions is, and I think you kind of answered it. Uh, you know, I was wondering if you was planning to, you know, write a book. And then I said, oh, a script. And it's funny that you came out with the script thing first. So, yeah. are you planning to write a book? How about that question? You know, I, never, I honestly it's never. It's kind of similar to the I script, never I guess. I thought about writing a book, but I, I wouldn't turn it, I wouldn't turn it down. I'm not, like, closed yeah. off to the opportunity. Um Maybe if I feel like I have something to really say, then yeah. I believe everybody everybody has a book in them. Everybody has a you story. So? Yeah. You know, everybody do. And uh, you know, if you're willing to, to tell it with real names or fake names, put it out there, man. Let's. Uh, my last question is the the wrap up the album. Uh, Marquis Filthy eight one nine. Love the album. Uh, people are gonna love this album. Uh, let the people know. Wrap it up for us, man. What does it really mean to you? Like, give us, give us some, 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 some background. Let's talk about it, man. A one nine, man. This project. Um, just wanted to show like a little bit more maturity. Okay. Um, get the music in like different, different spaces. More like, I know freak, right? Like going to club or some shit like that, <laughs> or like um, forty five or eight one nine. Probably like good workout songs, some shit like that. You know, like. Just get my music in different spaces. Like I know, okay. I know. I feel like my music is more like good for like a long time. Maybe traveling in the car. Or yeah. Some something like you that. You got a lot of conscious, yeah, um, reflective type of music. Exactly. Um, that and that's how I know you for the for the first album mm-hmm. and it's a couple of the Lucy singles. Yeah. Yeah. This album is different. It's like it gives me like more uh, like I guess. Um, Different vibes, like mm-hmm. you said, you're, you're trying. It's like you're being experimental on this album. Yes, doing yeah. a little bit of trap, doing a little bit of maybe, like you said, club type of bounce yeah. or yeah. or something like that. So I, you're being creative. You're being an artist. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. that's, that's who you are. That's why when I asked you first, and I asked you in a a, a text prior to this interview, mm-hmm. I said, "Who's the producer?" She's like, "Oh no, we're gonna do do it live." <laughs> and I'm like, "He produced this. Album. <laughs> he produced this album. He probably wrote it. He did." The, 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 the cover, wish, man. he did the, the executive producer, he probably like edited, like he did everything. Um, and 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 you know, um, you know, this this is dope. So, I want everybody to know that you are actually filming this. Um, this mm-hmm. is the THHC podcast, the hip hop connoisseur podcast with Marquis Walker featuring uh, Marquis Filthy. <laughs> He stole my name, man. I'm older. He so stole my name. I want to stop you right there. Oh. This is this is here we I, go. This is one of the reasons why I I I did this interview w- w- with you beyond wow. beyond the fact <laughs> that like 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 I told you like the fact that you actually you got like a notes like that you oh yeah you yeah, care. yeah yeah oh, it's, it's you, like really you yeah. care about oh, this yeah, shit like that 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 struck that's what struck me and also we got the same name <laughs> and we're both Leos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leo sees, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. oh. So I had to. The energy had to. come together, God. <laughs> Things happen for a we reason, We had to. Dog. We had to. Like, now we have to link up. Yeah. Nah, nah, it is. I, I, like, I, like, I told you, I was, my car was acting funny, and I was like, yo, I got to get here. I got to yeah. get here. Something told me I got to get here. I don't care. If I got to tow a home, man, I'll be all right. You know? So I got people out, it, that live know. in the areas. So I can go crash if I had to. You know what I'm saying? So, But yeah, man, I appreciate it. If you got any questions for me, that's what I usually ask. It's a strange question to ask, but you got any questions for me, and then uh, if you want to uh, end on something positive, I want you to uh, say something positive and uh, promote, 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 man. That's what okay. I usually do, you know, for the for the just for the for, just for the record. Um, I want to get out. How'd you find how'd you find my music? Like, how'd you get into my music? I found your music and I was working somewhere and he has a is, is your aunt. Yeah. OK. Yeah. He has an aunt. Uh, it's probably probably my age. And, uh, you know. We l- kind of linked up with hip hop, like it was like, you know, when you get, you have like a a a, a, a person at work that you just connect with, mm-hmm. and she just happened to be the one, man. And uh, you know, we talk, we talk about rap, 
I mean, deep rap. Not just like, you know, not talking about stuff on the radio. We're talking about Fabulous, you know, mm -hmm. Snoopy on the Roof, if y'all know that verse. Like, all that type of stuff like that. And uh, and she's seen how passionate I was with it. Like, I'm interviewing people, I'm doing this, I'm doing, you know, talking to producers, trying to create an album, doing mm -hmm. all types of stuff. She's like, damn, this guy, he's writing a book on music, mm -hmm. he's doing everything. What's going on with this dude? So we used to talk about it a lot. And then she was like, I got a nephew. And she's like, I don't really do this, but mm -hmm. I, I think you'll like him. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, oh, man. <laughs> I said, listen, if I don't like him, <laughs> we got to be still, we got to be cool. We still got to be cool at work. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, she she blessed me with uh, your information, and I, I researched you. And I never looked back since, mm -hmm. man. I've been a, a Marquee Filthy fan since, what, 2019? Yeah, that must have been around there, yeah. Something like that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Organic fan too. Yeah, I keep going back. I be like going back to your stuff, man. I don't, I don't even work there no more. Like I don't like man's aren't still cool, but I don't really mm -hmm. like like it's not be see each other every day. Yeah. But I so it's, it wasn't like you know me liking you wasn't a favor for her. It was like I like this dude. This yeah. dude's dope, right. and uh, we got to get his name out here, especially right. representing Boston. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank I, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm really trying to do. Just go around the world. Scream Roxbury, make some money off my music. Yeah, man. Yeah. Touring. Uh this one you just got me into a question, but yeah. Do you like touring and then uh where have you toured and you know, I guess what's the best place that you I perform? wish I've I've toured. Um I've only done shows locally um, and stuff in, like that? in Boston, yeah. Okay. Um best show I've done probably I opened up for Tiger um okay. at Big Night Live. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, in twenty twenty. Um I actually did that the same night I dropped Deeper Than Filthy. Ooh. Yeah, so I did that and then ran to the listening party. Same, Damn. Same night. Yeah. This dude hustling, boy. Yeah. Work out, boy. But I will have a show lined up very soon. Like, very soon. Okay. I, will, I will have a show. And I got I got you. You don't even need uh, to pay yeah. no Get that VIP nothing. pass, yeah. baby. Get that sticker, whatever it is. I got you, man. <laughs> I appreciate you for doing this, man. No, I appreciate, I appreciate you. you, man. I'm not um, like a... Quality artist, quality <laughs> gentleman, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was something about uh, your energy, your vibe that, you know, I said, okay, I got to I gotta go really meet this dude. Like, I don't meet everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't come out. I come outside, but I don't come outside. Yeah, you know I'm what I'm the saying? Same, so, I'm the same way. Yeah. So, you know, I don't. it's not like I'm visiting every rapper that I review. Mm -hmm. And I review gangster rappers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but, um, you know, you know, I'm careless. I mean, not careless. I'm, I'm careful. <laughs> what yeah. I say? I'm careful. Sorry. Um, yeah. Or who I meet, who I greet and talk to um, because I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm older. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I don't need mm -hmm. to be, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. I don't welcome bad energy in yeah, my circle. I get what you mean. Yeah. Put it that way. But um, if you could say something positive, give me a positive message, positive. It could be a quote. It could be anything. Something that resonates with you that's kind of, um, that leaves good energy or something. Something you can leave to the public. Man. I want to suggest that everybody follow their plan A. Um, whatever you feel is in, in your heart, you you wake up and you think about it. You go to sleep, you think about it. In the shower, you think about it. When you're driving, you think about it. When you sleeping, you think about it. Go yeah. go after it. You like you're not gonna feel fulfilled if you don't go after it. So that's what I gotta say. Follow you, follow your plan A. I like that, man. I like that. I appreciate it, man. Yo, listen. Marky Filthy has been an honor you. and a pleasure, man. Thank you. Honor and a pleasure, man. Thank you. To actually meet you. You know, to meet my my heroes in a sense, my you know, I'm a, I'm a fan first. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I hopefully we can do some some more business together in, in sure. the near future, man. But um, appreciate it, man. All right, y'all. This is the THHC podcast, the hip hop connoisseur podcast with Marquee, aka Severe, aka Severely Yours, man. Yeah, we out, man. We out and about, man. Peace out, my love. <laughs>